Hello, and welcome to the Jessel Podcast. I'm Ernie Raposa, your host, and today we're talking about finding balance, getting the job that is in alignment with who you are. Our special guest today is Shannon O'Brien, founder of Whole You Career and Life Strategy. Since 2012, Shannon has helped hundreds of mission-driven job seekers to find the clarity, confidence, and connections to pursue their life's work and live a balanced, purposeful life. Previous to Whole U, Shannon worked for seven years at Harvard and MIT, where she promoted diversity and innovation, respectively, and advised both graduate and undergraduate students. Shannon earned two master's degrees, an MA as a Rotary World Peace Fellow in Tokyo, Japan, and a master's in technology, innovation, and education from Harvard University. Welcome, Shannon. Hi, Arnie. Thank you for having me here. We are so excited to have you here, Shannon. Um, it, full disclosure, uh, when I first met you, you came to one of my MBA classes. Uh, the class was the gig economy, uh, which was a new thing way back when, um, and uh, have just kept tabs ever since to, to see you grow uh, uh, your uh, your business and your practice and what you were bringing to the world. And, and back then, at least to me, the, the whole life coaching was just a, a, a whole new concept and, and you were one of the pioneers out there. So that really resonated with me where I was on my own journey um, and super glad to have you here with us to uh, share what you're bringing to the world. Lovely. I'm so glad that it resonated and it was a pleasure to, to go back to Babson. Babson's actually where I took my first entrepreneurship class in 1997. So bringing it way back and um, Diane Mulcahy, the author of the book *The Gig, uh, the Gig Economy*, right. invited me to that class, and it was um, it was nice to to speak with people who are like minded and saying, well, maybe the job search doesn't need to be the traditional job search that my parents went through or our grandparents went through. And Diane is definitely one of the pioneers helping to rethink that. So um, it was a pleasure to to visit, and and how cool that you remembered me and invited me back. It's good to reconnect. Fantastic. Well, well, Shannon, uh, not everybody knows you. So why don't you get uh, our listeners here uh, up to speed on your journey? Sure. My name is Shannon. And I, um, let's see, so 10 years ago, I started Whole You Career and Life Strategy mm -hmm. to help people find out what would make them well. So wellness of mind, body, spirit, mm -hmm. what would help them enjoy their job and find alignment and fulfillment. And then also what would help them give back to society. So service to society. And these were three things that I myself was looking for, but mm -hmm. I didn't really find in the marketplace in a, in a condensed kind of way, you had to cobble them together. And my idea was that I would help people curate different resources that would help them live a balanced purposeful life, but also pursue their life's work because I think that like it or not for better or worse our job is our livelihood it's where we spend the most time it's where we get our our, our money and our stability and so combining all of those things has been a, a challenge uh, over these past 10 years to be able to express it right to be able to market it right to be you know pull in the right people so there's a lot of challenges that we could talk about there on the mm -hmm. entrepreneurial side but in terms of journey you know, I was one of these seekers. I didn't know what I wanted to do. In fact, when I was in high school, I, I couldn't wait for the day that I was old enough to drop out because I just didn't <laughs> feel, I didn't feel drawn to any of the educational material that I was exposed to. I didn't understand uh, what the outcomes were uh, in terms of, of testing. I was a terrible test taker because I didn't like to be pressured or have, you know, a timed test. So I really felt stupid. And in fact, that, that class that I took at Babson, uh, I was a senior in high school and it really lit me up to say wow I'm I'm not stupid I, I I'm smart I, I can initiate something so that was a yeah. real turning point for me and it took you know until senior year where I said wow I found something that really lights me up and is exciting and so I was kind of going through the motions as most of us do you know applying to school getting in I actually went had a you know spiky journey as many of us do uh went to undergrad freshman year at Boulder, Colorado, the University of Colorado. Didn't feel I was studying business because I wanted to be a businessman like my dad. And I said, okay, well, let me pursue this and ended up doing an internship in London at Standard & Poor's Money Market Services. And at some point, I had to admit to myself, I, I this is not for me. I'm not, I don't have an aptitude for numbers or a joy for, for numbers. 
And, um, and so, you know, then continuing to follow the journey, came back to the States, ended up transferring to Boston College. I picked uh, intercultural communication to study because I had grown up in Europe and been exposed to all of these different cultures and, and wanted to pursue more study about culture and diversity. And then after graduating, this was a, a turning point as well. Um, in nine, um, like, so when I was a senior in college, 9-11 happened and I just couldn't fathom getting a quote unquote regular nine to five job and sitting in an office or anywhere thinking about um, what was going on in the world and, and at a macro level. So I ended up applying for a fellowship. That's when I moved to Tokyo, Japan for two years to study peace and conflict resolution. So you can kind of see that I was just going, you know, just following what was happening around me and also what's happening internally. And I'll, and I'll stop there. I'll kind of wrap it up um, by saying that it occurred to me when I was in Japan studying these macro level issues. Wow, I feel so powerless to help change or improve all of these things that are happening at such a big, massive level. Why don't I just go from the macro to the micro mm -hmm. and help one person at a time, including myself, starting with myself, but then eventually, you know, helping helping others to just piece all of these components together in their life to to try to enjoy their lives, be fulfilled, and uh, make the world a better place than they found it, just in their own backyard. That's a that's a fantastic story, and and just such a great philosophy uh, around um, exploring until you find what fills your tank, lights you up, sparks joy, right? Um, mm -hmm. I think, uh, and and maybe it's just my the perspective I've developed over the years. It you have so many people who feel the pressure to well, I've got to pick a a topic, I've got to pick a career, and then are just locked into it for it, it, perhaps the entirety of their careers uh, without really taking a step back to say, is this for me? Or feeling like they can't. Um, and and going back to my first entrepreneurship class. Um, uh, there was a, a chart on the board that really resonated with me and it showed what, what the world thinks the entrepreneur journey is. And it's a straight line from point A to point B. Uh, and, and this, this is not just entrepreneurship, it's life where you have point A and then lots of squiggly lines to get yes. to, to point B and, and that should be perfectly okay. But I, I think, uh, in some cases, society has just programmed us to say, well, pick a career, stick with it and go you know, do as much as you can in that. Um, and, and it's great that you self-identified early on, well, this isn't working for me. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. And, and you've, you've built this rich tapestry of experiences that inform your ability to, to impact individuals or groups of people uh, at a time. So that, that's really powerful. Yeah. I, I actually love what you said about, um, or it's such an important point, the, the, the thinking it's a linear line and thinking like, I'm just going to find what I love and invest in it forever for the mm -hmm. rest of my life and sometimes that happens and I think I I don't know about you I have a little bit of envy for people who find that early on and just and just love it and stick with it but the confusing part and why why I mean I did jump around a little bit but I would say for the past 10 years I did find something that was yeah never ending is fascinating in a way that never stops there are still bumps in the road but i but my the intensity of my passion and belief in what i do is still there so i i think i that would be one caution is like even when the road gets bumpy it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to jump ship and and perhaps i jump ship too early with some of the things that i was exploring but so understanding like that graph that you brought up is mm -hmm. is a perfect illustration of you might love something and it can still be bumpy and that's okay. Right. Yeah. Um, well, so as we, we were talking earlier about uh, uh, who, who would be watching this uh, video or listening to this podcast and uh, Jessel is, is primarily focused on uh, uh, individuals in transition um, who may be looking for inspiration or tools or insight uh, into uh, finding that next role today, and and one of the one of the elements we really want to drive home with people is to to not just go after that next thing because it seems like that that next step, uh, but to take a step back and and try try and find something that that brings joy to your life and that brings fulfillment and, and satisfaction. Um, uh, so, which is another reason why 
you bubbled up to to into our radar to, to come talk to us. Uh, so with keeping that type of individual in mind, uh, I, I know you you brought up some some um, challenges that, that you face uh, with with the people that you work with or that they are facing. So as you work with professionals in transition, what, what are some of the common challenges you see out there? Well, I'll refer to some calls that I've just had some uh, yeah. this week with some prospects who are interested in potentially working with me. And one stood out this week and, um, it, you know, this person, he want, he's um, wanting to find the next step. He's actually a teacher. He thought teaching was his passion and it was for a while. He was teaching Latin mm -hmm. and, and now he wants to make a switch into a career, but still wants to have a stable income. And I could just hear in his voice that he was already sabotaging himself. So he was already saying, well, I want to do something fulfilling, but I know it's not going to pay really well. So I'm, I'm prepared for that. So he was already backing himself into a corner. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that that's one of the challenges that most people are up against. They have this perception of what the world out there is like and, and how much it pays. And they haven't even had the conversation yet. So I think that that would be one challenge that I see and 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 therefore we need to shift our mindset and our attitude and and our belief in what's possible and also the next level of that another challenge is that you know people are in this box or in this silo and they put themselves into it but they need to just get out of it and 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 get a new perspective and a bigger perspective and be more creative so for this individual I'm talking about you know let's say that he does find this fulfilling job that um that, that pays less and therefore he needs more money. So he would just need to supplement in different ways. And so I'm a huge fan of thinking with an entrepreneurial mindset. Mm -hmm. And even if you're starting a lemonade stand or, or whatever, um, just to get some more income and, and multiple streams of revenue, I was joking with him that even Tony Robbins has like hundreds of streams of income and he's a multimillionaire. So just being creative that the money doesn't need to come from that one job. So I think another challenge is, is that transitioners face to answer your question is that people are not creative. No, that's, that's good. And, and I think especially folks who are more seasoned are, have come from a world of you get a job, you work that job, and you retire. Um, I, I'd say folks who are younger, who have tapped into the gig economy, know more about it. But um, there are still big, let's say, farm systems where some of the larger companies out there go and recruit at colleges, and, and they want folks locked into these these roles where this is your life, this is your job, um, and and it's uh, it, it takes opening folks' eyes to just the the plethora of, of opportunities out there that you, you can still have a full-time job, you can still do these other things, or you can do a bunch of small things that, that um, add up to pretty, pretty good income. Uh, so, so you can explore uh, those, those opportunities, those things that potentially let you up. Plays into what is your life about? Yeah. Uh, what are your expectations of your life? What um, what were you fed by your parents or by society? And does that really align with what you want? So you really just need to take a step back and say, and that, that's what I encourage all of my clients. And I walk them through this process, beginning with what are your top values right now? Mm. So if money is a huge value, wealth is a huge value for you, then Yes, maybe you do need that investment banker job or or some yeah. job that's really going to pay a lot. Um, if it's family, then you need to move around the pieces accordingly. If it's freedom, then those golden handcuffs are not going to be in alignment. So it's aligning your expectations of life with your values and then the re the quote unquote reality of what is out there and what your employer or clients are expecting from you. Nice. And, and so that's, would you call that clarity? And, and I'm, I'm looking at a, 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 a list that you, you and I have, have talked about around, it looks like you have the three C's, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, right, so exactly. 
so clar clarity is huge. Um, and, and, but you did touch on this particular, um, a client of yours who, who was at that early stage and you talked about the saboteurs and, and lack of confidence and, and can, can we scratch the surface a bit more on, on the confidence angle? Yes, yes, of course. So, uh, clarity, I think, yes, when people are feeling stuck and yep. they're feeling like they're not creative, uh, yep. they have a lack of clarity. Well, I know that I don't want to do what I'm doing now. That's where we're starting is that I don't want to do what I'm doing now. So I know that I want to be doing something else, but I don't know what that is because right. I haven't seen it. It hasn't, I have, you know, my friends don't do it. I, I, it's just not clear to me. So they need to do more research and soul seeking. It's an internal and external job. It's happening hopefully simultaneously. Right. What do I want? What's going to fill, fill me? Be honest with myself and then look to the outside world to have informational interviews. I, I hesitate to say that because I think it conjures up this old school career search language that is kind of crusty. You know, we'll have some inner, inner, whatever. I didn't even want to say that, but I'm like uh, yeah, yeah. babbling over it. Have some conversations that are, that are rich, that are, you're, you're, you're speaking to people in your life or people that you admire, reaching out to them to find out if you admire them, find out if they really like what they're doing. And if so, how did they get there? Do they recommend, do they have any recommendations for you? So it's, um, that's the connections piece, actually. So I'm I'm jumping ahead, but in sequence, finding the clarity of what you really want to do, and like I said, it's an internal and external job. Then the confidence piece. To answer your question. The confidence piece. I think we get confident the more clear we get. So mm. this is why it's they're all happening at once simultaneously. Yeah. But I like yeah. to think of them in that sequence: clarity, then confidence, and the confidence comes from yes, I'm clear. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm great at. And and yes, it will pay what I need it to pay. And so I'm confident with that clarity. And then the connections piece kind of comes, I believe, at the third and the final stage. When you're clear, you're confident, all your materials together, you've gone through this process that I walk people through. And at the end, you feel more confident in reaching out to people. You're not wasting their time. You're not... Um, you, you don't lack confidence in, in the way that you're communicating with them. You know that it's a dialogue. You know that likely they've been in the same place and needed to reach out as well. So yeah. the connections piece, whether it's to people or resources, that's the third C, the clarity, confidence, and connections. Yep. And and I've learned, um, especially more recently over the last couple of years as I've done more coaching, um, I, I'm amazed at how accessible people are and how willing they are to share their knowledge. Um, as uh, to your point, if you come to them with a clear, Hey, this is the journey I'm on. This is why I'd love to talk to you. Here's what I'd like to get out of the conversation. Um, people are generally very generous with, with their time. And, um, I think I've come from my, my, my lens that I look at some of these senior leaders has, has been a bit more of hero worship and, and I get, but you know, that, 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 uh, overwhelms me a little bit sometimes, but the more of I've, I've gone outside my comfort zone and engage with those people. They're just people on a mm -hmm. journey. And, um, yeah, they're, they're, um, yeah, it's, it's, a uh, uh, been a great uh, experience for me to, to learn from, from those folks. Um, but yeah, I think people who get into a role, get caught up in life and everything they, they forget about their connections sometimes it just happens it's human nature um but it's so important to not only explore those new connections but keep the ones you have active uh, mm. uh because we're all uh it, it's you, you have a cohort you have a tribe you have the the people that that you you've met along the way um don't let them just fade into the woodwork uh because you could help them they could help you um, and, and that's not always front of mind for folks. Um, uh, they tend to think about that when they're in transition mostly. Yeah. yeah. You just made so many good points and, and definitely the people who are closest to you that it doesn't need to be, well, I need to talk to Richard Branson. I how am I going to talk to him? There's yeah. thousands of people on the way to Richard Branson that yeah. are going to be super helpful for you and probably more relevant to you because he's up here and he's, 
I mean, I'll use myself as an example. So far from where I am as an entrepreneur, having been it for decades, yeah. it would give me, it would be more valuable for me to talk to someone at this, at this level or this level, you know, and kind of work up gradually. I think that we have a tendency to want to skip the queue, like skip right. the line and just go to the top, mm -hmm. but not really valuing the, the person that's next up on the rung or even your peer who's side to side you know, uh, shoulder to shoulder with you in the trenches doing what you're doing. So mm -hmm. I love what you said about looking around at your, at your, you know, at who's right in front of you. Right. Yeah. Although I wouldn't mind having a, a drink with Richard Branson. No, <laughs> Me too. I'll join you. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, let's just keep that. That'll be a, our, our full back burner that we'll, we'll figure out how to, how to drive that forward. Yeah. Um, well, and, and so you have a favorite philosopher, um, and, and you shared some quotes with me. Uh, is that something we can talk about? So, yes, thank you for asking about that. I, uh, I mentioned Alan Watts to everyone I know. Everyone's mm -hmm. like, okay, Shannon, enough with the Alan Watts. So he was this British philosopher. Um, I, I listened to him maybe on a weekly basis. And there's a lot of, his son actually recorded a lot of his talks. And he would go around the country and around the world uh, talking about his philosophy. And for some reason, he resonates more than any other philosopher or influencer, modern day influencer. Mm -hmm. And he's almost become a modern day influencer because his son is releasing this content and even DJs and musicians are, are blending his words into modern music. But and he has thousands and thousands of, of statements and quotes that are um, they're settling. You know, when, when I feel I'm having existential dread or something or I feel overwhelmed or I'm feeling bogged down. I just put on some Alan Watts and listen to it. And he has he brings a sense of humor to it as well, that it just puts me at ease. And so one quote that came up when I was thinking of this conversation I was going to have with you, and I'll, I don't know it verbatim, so I'm just um, reading that he observed, every intelligent individual wants to know what makes him tick, and yet is at once fascinated and frustrated by the fact that oneself is the most difficult of all things to know. So that's not rocket science, right? We, we, we want to understand ourselves, but it's, it's almost like the most difficult puzzle to put together. Mm -hmm. And so no wonder it's frustrating. I think to that point, we just need to embrace the fact that, that life and this journey is going to, by nature, we know by now, right? We're in our, whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, I think beyond the teens, we're like, oh, wait a second, there's a repetition here. And the repetition is challenge frustration, struggle, mm -hmm. trying trying to overcome some of those things. So I think w the good news and the bad news is that we're all in it together. We know that this is challenging and just to become quicker and smarter and sharper at overcoming some of these things. So uh, I think that at the root of it, that's why I started Whole You is for people to help um, figure out what makes them tick and and how to be more effective in in obtaining it, maintaining it, and also enjoying it. Yeah. What, what are, what are, what are some of the tools that, that you use to help people do exactly that? So, well, let me, let me back up because I, I, I love the quote from Alan Watts because it, it is this existential challenge where we don't always have that lens to look inward. We think we know ourselves um, and we may make assumptions about how we show up in the world and how others interact with us. Um, we may not always have that, that muscle that helps us understand or that insight that helps us understand how we show up to others. Um, mm -hmm. but why am I not succeeding? Why am I not building that relationship with that person? Um, and, and I know just in doing assessments and having conversations and, and sharing, um, with, with folks, um, that feedback, uh, it, it helps, helps drive those insights and open folks' eyes and, and it's, it's as a coach, it's super rewarding to see folks just say, oh, <laughs> right? I never knew that about myself. Uh, and that that for me, just just uh, it, it's such a rewarding feeling to know that I helped unlock that for somebody. So um, how, so how, how do you do that with your you know, without sharing too much of your intellectual property here? Um, uh, could you give us a high level of how you how you do that with folks? 
Yeah, I'm I'm actually glad that you mentioned the IP part because the the when when I think an entrepreneur starts at the beginning, they're like, I don't want to share my secrets. Yeah. Um, and and yes, you cobble I've cobbled together a process. Yeah. And you know, there there's spe specific five steps, and this is the way it is. But at the same time, there's thousands, if not millions, of coaches doing the same thing and talking about the same stuff. So I think yeah. that um. Uh, I'm I'm very free and open with the process that I've developed, and it's so much so, in fact, that the one place that I send people is, hey, look at this five-step process, see if it resonates, see if it's helpful for you, and it's it's a free workshop, and people can go through it and never speak to me, um, just to understand what the five steps were, because I know that I went through those five steps myself when I experienced mm -hmm. the layoff and was looking for a fulfilling job, so I would encourage people to to check that out and. Um, the one place I would send people to 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 see some of the tools that I recommend is wholeyou.info slash free resources. That's my my website. And so some of the free resources are this career workshop that walks through the five steps and I can high level explain those to you as well. Um, this is funny because when I started Whole You, I thought it was going to be talking about wellness career and service as i said at the top mm -hmm. of our conversation and as i have gone through this process over the years i've realized that a lot of prospects or clients are saying yeah yeah balance finding balance that's great but what i need is a job i need stability so i responded and said okay well when i look back i at my own process of finding a fulfilling job these were the five steps that I went through and, and go ahead. It's called the career development program. It's outlined in that workshop. And then people would come back even still and say, yeah, yeah, that's all great. But I just need a resume. Right. And and so I just need a resume to get me the job. They were so hyper focused on this resume thing. I said, mm -hmm. whoa, I'm pretty I'm pretty far away from holistic uh, wellness and service. But uh, sure, let's work on your resume. So mm -hmm. this has been a tension for me as an entrepreneur being a, um, a resume writer when I really want to talk about all these other things. But there is this image that I have of the life cycle of a whole you client or member or student is that, OK, they maybe come in the door with these free resources, just dipping their toe in, maybe help them have a call like an exploratory call maybe their resume and then and kind of build up and not um pressure them into any kind of process that might not feel necessary at the moment so if it's just right. their resume and so i have uh some some resources on that link as well that help people think through how to write a resume in a more effective way in addition some other you know blog tips and and articles and videos that i've done over the years about meditation about eating right or according to your type or uh, getting enough exercise all of the basics but trying mm -hmm. to do it in a little bit more of creative succinct fun way so all of those uh, free resources are, are tools that I recommend for your listener people who are in this transition and looking for tools and ways to get unstuck or unlocking some sort of motivation to move forward right and and I I would I would compare some of the requests you get to going to the doctor and saying it, it hurts here. Right. And, and the doctor says, well, I, you need to do six months of therapy and um, lose 50 pounds. And, and you say, well, no, I just, can you just give me a shot or a pill? I want this like right now. Um, and, and so do you want to just treat a, a symptom that's just going to come back? Um, or, or do you want to fully address the core issue? And I look mm -hmm. at that, that resume example you, you gave as, well, we can clean up your resume, but will it reflect who you truly are, what you really want to be? And will it get you the job that's going to bring you joy, um, versus, okay, I'll fix up your resume and get you a job. Uh, so, so I, I feel like, uh, that's a, a great, uh, use case for, let's really dive in and make sure that we're looking at everything um, and that the resume is in a, is in a, it's an output of your process uh, yes. but it's not it's not the end all be all right yeah i'm really glad that you got that you brought up that doctor example that's exactly it and i've thought yeah. of that in the past and i've been there myself just give me the shot just give me the <laughs> this hurt you know just yeah. just put the bandaid on it now i want the yeah. quick fix right and that's totally what's happening is that people are not wanting to say wait a second I need to go for a walk every day and and improve my heart health. Wait a second. I need to not eat that bag of cookies and eat the and, eat, and go for vegetables instead. Sometimes, you know, like people yeah. don't want to do the hard work. 
um, and because it requires a behavior change, which is difficult. So you're totally right. That's the exact uh, that's the exact image of of what I'll keep in mind now is understanding the human nature, and and that they want the quick fix, and then maybe just like we were saying, the Richard Branson is where we want to get. Like, yes, I want to balance purposefully out life. Yes, I want to pursue my life's work. But right now I want a resume. But right now I just want, what's the baby step that's going to get me to that higher thing? So it's it's definitely a journey and we shouldn't expect uh, people or ourselves to move faster than than we're ready to. Yeah. Well, and, and in this on-demand society, the spaces that you and I are in, it, it's a, it, it is a mind shift to uh, slowing down taking a step back. And um, it's, it's, I'd say, especially in the last 20 years, we've gotten just more accustomed to, I want a thing, it's on my porch tomorrow, right? Yes. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, the good goal of Amazon, right? <laughs> so, so it's, it's ruined us for, for, for coaching and deep exploration. Um, so, so can you share your five-step process here and can I pop them on the screen uh, to give a preview? Is, is that okay? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. And I'll, um, I'll go to it now as well, just to yeah. walk through it. Yeah. So thanks for asking. So the five steps are vision, mm -hmm. strengths, resume, LinkedIn, and network. This is the infographic that I have. And those are words that, that people think of, right? Um, there's a lot more to it, but starting with vision, for example, it's figuring out what your values are. Mm -hmm. What are your top five values? It's going through an exercise about what your ideal job is and answering a bunch of questions. Very simple. I try to make all of these exercises and all of these steps as super simple as possible so that it's not overwhelming. Because again, we were just talking about the doctor's office. We don't want it to be difficult. We don't want it to yeah. be complex. So it's literally, you know, starting where, where's the location of your job? Do you want to work virtually? You know, um, describe your ideal colleague, your ideal boss. What is a project that you really like? Like getting into details of, of what you would be doing at your job. And so figuring out your values, your ideal job, that's your like first vision and the coordinates that you're going to put into the GPS when you get into this career search car of yours. Mm -hmm. And then the next level, the second step is figuring out your strengths and skills. So I know, Ernie, that you're a big fan of Strengths Finder or Clifton Strengths. Yeah. I am as well. I took it maybe almost 10 years ago now. And it was very poignant and 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 um, eye opening for me to say, wait a second, connectedness, developing other people—that's actually a strength. That's just my the air that I breathe. That's just me who I naturally am. I thought again, back to me going to London to work at Standard and Poor's. I thought I had to be good at numbers. I thought I had to be good at business and these other things that I was not naturally good at. And so understanding your strengths, understanding your skills and owning them and knowing that somebody needs them. And if you do them because they just become natural to you, that's your greatness. That's your, the sweet spot. So really focusing in on, there's these exercises that I recommend the strengths finder. I'm not a, um, you know, I don't get any kickback from the strengths finder book, but I highly recommend it. There's another skills assessment that I walk people through. And so you're finding these key words the, the idea here with these five steps is that you're putting together your own words to develop your vision, to put these words together. And, and then again, as we're saying, when you get to the connections piece, you're more clear, more confident when you share it. So the vision and the strengths are the internal part. That's you getting honest with yourself about what you want what you're good at and where you want to spend your time and energy. So that's the internal piece. Mm -hmm. And then the next steps are kind of the external pieces. Yes, we'll get to your resume. You'll have a good mm -hmm. resume. Um, or maybe sometimes some clients are like, well, I have a good resume. I just want a bio, you know, or there's some or a cover letter. There's some mm -hmm. written document uh, that's going to represent and use the right words to articulate it. Because I have these words now, but I need to sprinkle those into something where people are picking up what I'm putting down. Mm -hmm. So the resume piece and then the LinkedIn piece, um, LinkedIn, I'm such a huge fan of LinkedIn. It's how I connect with so many people, including clients around the world. LinkedIn is, um, since it was acquired by Microsoft, it's an even, even better tool, putting more resources into it. And I think that in this modern era where we're connecting mostly online these days, you know, you, you, you have to make a, a first impression online in the digital format and there's certain like tools and tricks and and ways to do that and um 
for example, uh, the not everybody knows about this little microphone tool on LinkedIn and that you can state your name, but they also don't know that that with that microphone, you, you actually are given more time than just stating your name. So you might as well do a nice introduction and they get to know more about you by hearing your voice. Um, then there's also a video function where your your photo can turn into a video. So it's you talking. So I think that people don't know that these tools exist, first of all, and then they don't know how mm -hmm. to leverage them. So that's- I didn't, that's, I didn't know they existed. So I learned, well, I learned a lot. A journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have an example on, on my site. So um, you oh. can look at my LinkedIn page as an example, but I highly recommend you use those. Excellent. And if people pronounce your last name, you know, mispronounce your last name, you want to like correct them and, and use that tool. I think that's originally what it was for. If someone has a name that's hard to pronounce. Um and so linked again, it doesn't have to be LinkedIn. It could be your website. It could be some other platform that you use. We're just, that's a represent a representation of your online brand in a way. And um, having studied educational technology, I bring uh, that lens to when we're, when we're focusing on that fourth piece, LinkedIn or professional brand online. And then the final piece, this is actually where one people want to get to first. Hey, Shannon, I see that you have a connection here and here and here. Hook me up. But it's too early. It's too early to do that right away. Like introduce you and I don't know you. I don't know what you're about. You yeah. don't know what you're about. You don't know how to articulate it. So so that would be a wasted opportunity. And that's why it comes at the end and is the fifth and final piece so that you can connect again after you're clear, after you're confident, you have your materials brushed up, your online brand is on point, and then it all comes together. So that's the five steps. And it's all outlined in that free workshop I mentioned. Fantastic. Well, we'll post a link to your site so folks can go check that out. And thank you for outlining that for us. That's, that's thank great. you. Yeah. Well, um, we're coming to the end of our podcast here, Shannon. And uh, we're so excited that you were able to join us. This was so much fun. Um, I um, One of the things we, we tend to ask our, our guests uh, to learn a little more about them is, is if you were uh, stranded on a desert island, uh, if, you, if you could choose just one thing, what what would you bring with you? Uh, food, person, book, you name it, just one of something. Okay. Um, I, well, I'm tempted to say because I don't like the sun, I get burnt so easily. It would definitely uh, have to be yeah. sunblock. Sunblock would yeah. probably be something that I bring or an umbrella. Like I need to have some mm -hmm. shade. So it's just yeah. practical. Um, and in terms of food or something to eat, I'm thinking if it's hot, I would want to cool down a little bit. And actually a friend of mine, uh, Andrew, a high school friend of mine, he started this popsicle company and he lives in Naples, Florida, and he sells them only there for, for, for now until he figures out distribution, but they sound so good. They're, they're just flavors and ingredients that are, are pretty unique. And I feel like he has like lots of different kinds and flavors. So I feel like that would keep me interested every day to, to look forward to that one cooling popsicle. Okay. Um, and then in terms of books or, or media, I guess you would have to bring your iPhone or something to play music and, and then play my beloved Alan Watts uh, videos over and over again. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I guess I would be more inclined to like listen to him and so bring my iPhone and my my headphones rather than than a book to sit there and read in, in in the heat but he has a lot of great books as well so something Alan Watts to keep me uh keep me sane on that island yeah yeah this is feeling more and more like a glamping or concierge type of island. <laughs> uh, I'm going to this island <laughs> I, I think a deserted island for a bit would be nice to get away so uh yeah this is a you're, you're yeah <laughs> all right well, well, thanks so much, Shannon. Uh, parting thoughts here. Is there anything you'd like to leave people with? Yeah, I'd like to, uh, first of all, empathize with people. You know, if they're coming here, listening to you, and by the way, Ernie, you just have like great content and you're doing a great thing. And I want to commend you for starting this project and helping people because I imagine that you've been there yourself. I certainly have. So I think bringing empathy to people who feel stuck and feel hopeless there is hope it just keep going you know um that that would be probably the number one is that we're all in this to it together for an example and and because we're in it together try to help others get outside of yourself i think that would be another uh, point of advice is you know you're going through it but when we're navel gazing and we're looking down we're not looking out we're not connecting with other people so also remember that that you need to pass it on and help others as well because they might be struggling as well in, in any 
some sort of way that you could help with. So it's kind of a karmic flow. Um, I would encourage people to stay present and trust the process. If you don't have some sort of meditation or mindfulness um, practice, um, I recommend maybe looking into it, even if it's a one minute or five minute calm.com. Um, I interviewed a friend of mine, Morgan Dix. He has a, a website called About Meditation. I have a, a blog post and video on, on that. Mm -hmm. It's just one minute. He's saying one minute a day just to meditate and calm yourself. Um, I would recommend that. I would recommend maybe getting out in nature, going for a walk. And, and, and again, to the point of the topic of what we're talking about, finding balance, tunnel vision of like, I need a job, I need a job, I need a job. You need to get back to this serenity prayer of there's some things that you can't control. Whether that HR person or employer gets back to you is kind of out of your control. You've done everything that you've could. Um, you're 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 networking and trying to you know send more energy and positive thoughts that way. But okay, you've done that. You've done all that you could, and now you want to shift your focus to other things that are going to fill your cup personally as well. So stay balanced and not hyper focused and desperate right. desperate uh desperation is really um is not a good look <laughs> especially <laughs> when it comes to job searching you know what i mean like yeah. Ernie, you said before about those big wigs that you want to entertain and you might be nervous when you're going up to them just relax they're humans you're humans like you're a human just uh just relax take a step back and bring a more positive um easy state of mind it's hard i know that's easier than it um it's harder to do than it is mm -hmm. to say yeah. but yeah. just to kind of relax about it and trust the process i think that, that would be my number one thing because when you look back hindsight is always 2020 and you're like wow i'm so glad i didn't get that job i'm so glad i didn't end up with that person i'm so glad that things worked out the way they did and and they it was a necessary part of my journey yeah good well, uh, and, and we're all on we're all on a journey and um, I'm glad that you're out there to help people along on theirs. Um, so thank you again for coming in and chatting with me. Really enjoyed the conversation. Um, so so for folks listening, uh, our guest is Shannon O'Brien, uh, owner and founder of Whole You. Uh, you can visit her on wholeyou.info and she has free re resources available if you want to get going right away. Uh, just go to her website and check that stuff out or grab some time with her for an introductory chat. She's awesome. Thanks. Thank, Shannon. You. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Have a great Bye. day. Have a great day.